Welcome to the start of this week's reading vlog. And yeah, as always, I have a list of things I'd like to get done that probably won't get done, but we will see. First off, on the Kindle, I am so close to finishing Words of Radiance. Like, I'm in part five. I have a hundred pages left, maybe 130 pages left. I'm hoping to finish that tonight. Right now it's six and I have to tutor someone <laughs> and I'm gonna watch an episode of Star Trek Next Generation with the boyfriend, but hopefully I can finish it tonight. Um, oh, what to say? Yeah, I just, all the moments, I just love it. It's a reread for me, a third reread. And finally, like, yeah, epic things are happening. What is weird? is there were some interludes and things that happened and even like beginning of chapter things that I thought were an Oathbringer so like I really don't remember Oathbringer <laughs> so I'm, I mean there are things I remember from Oathbringer but I'm very interested to see what happens and I want to get to Raven Stratagem so this is what I want to pick up when I finish Words of Radiance and I'm very excited to read this because I bought it months ago and just it's such a floppy paperback and it's soft and it's pretty so those are the physical reads I assume I'll read more physically because I don't know Raven Stratagem is kind of short compared to what I've been reading but I don't know yet and the audiobook is Empire of Gold which um, I've been listening to on my way to my commute and also They've opened up our gym facility and like, I don't see a human, it's very safe. Um, at my school you have to be tested once or actually as an undergrad twice a week for COVID and you also have to do a daily survey. So you have to do be up on all of those things to get the badge needed to be into the gym and you schedule a slot and they clean after each slot. So I feel very safe. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm basic, I just do the elliptical because honestly I haven't been to the gym since like January. And um, although I've been holding off the COVID weight, it's starting to show because I'm not someone who can easily work out at home. Like I do have, uh, I set up Dance Dance Revolution on my boyfriend's Wii. It's something I played a lot growing up. I'm oddly good at it. And so I have that for like at home sort of active work. And I used to walk a lot, but now I live in a different area. So my walking paths are not the same. So having the gym as like a viable safe option again has been great and where I've been listening to Empire of Gold. All right, so thoughts of Empire of Gold. Another book where it's like the not the first in a series. Uh, so if you don't know about the Davabad trilogy, it's a story of Nari, Ali, and Dara. So you have these three characters that are your main focal points. And you're in the Middle East, so you start in Cairo, but you end up, I think, east of that in Davabad. And you have this Jinn history, so these these jinns and devas used to be these all-powerful fire beings. They got in trouble. Stuff happens, so they have a more, like, mortal, immortal presence. And that's where Davabad is. It's the city of the jinn. And Nari finds out she has this connection to them. And so that's where the whole story goes from. There's politics. And it does a really good job of exploring really what I feel are kind of complex situations. Um, the conqueror versus the conqueror, you have the, you know, refugees and the immigrants, like you have all of these things brought into the story, I think in really interesting, not black and white ways. And there's also just the whole dealing with your personal demons, and actual demons. <laughs> yeah, it's great. There are some characters I for sure hate, <laughs> but others where I'm like, I just, I don't know where I land and it's really interesting. <sighs> So yeah, I'm only 25% of the way through that one, but that's my audiobook. So these are the goals and I will check in as I have read more. <gasps> say hi. He's kind of saying hi. We'll say that's hi. All right, been reading things. So first let's talk about Empire of Gold. I'm like halfway through and there are shenanigans afoot. I don't believe anything people are saying. Um, yeah, so if you've read the series, um, there are definitely certain histories that are told for certain characters. I think actually all the characters. So Nari, Ali, and Dara all have things in their history that we think we know, and we don't. I don't think we do. There are lots of things, and I'm calling shenanigans. Right, Putao? That is very close. You are very close to the screen, Putao. I should have named him Poutine with how much weight he has on him. But... 
So with Empire of Gold, that's just been going great. Welcome to the cat show. That is to say, extremely invested, really need to know what's going to happen. It's, it's really good. It's just really good. There's a lot going on. There's just a lot of mystery. And what I really need to know is how are we solving this problem? Like there's this huge problem. There's been this huge problem for all three books. I mean, it's a tale as old as time, sort of. You have a land that has gone through a lot of political strife because it's, it's just, it's a lot of family feuding. It's, it's a lot of um, uh, classism. It's just, there's a lot of political problems and I don't know if it's fixable, but I think some of our characters are going to try and fix it. I've also been reading Raven Stratagem. So I'm not gonna lie. The first like 60 or 80 pages were rough for me. I, it took me a while to get used to it because um, at the end of last book, some stuff happened. And when we start this book, we're not with the people who the stuff happened to. So I've had to get to know a few new characters. So I just had to reorient myself, get myself invested. But now I'm invested in these characters. They're becoming a little more real to me. And I'm starting to see the humor everyone talks about with this book. And General Jadao is still awesome. Um, definitely confirming a lot of my world building thoughts and where I think things were coming from. So yeah, I'm just I'm having a good time. I'm not sure where things are going. Um, I'm just kind of along for the ride. If you can't tell, the kitty's here. And I'm also reading Baptism of Fire, and thank goodness this has been a better read <laughs> than Time of Contempt so far. I'm only a hundred or so pages in, but I, I will say, before reading it, I did like a whole deep dive, get myself reacquainted to the world thing, because Time of Contempt, I... There's like a thing that happens politically. It's like a big deal with the Nilfgaardians and the sorcerers and Redania and like a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of names that I was never given any buy-in to caring about. Like, as you read these stories, you're normally more isolated with the Witcher, so you're not getting a global context. And a lot of the global things, I just are not handled super well by this author. So I had to go on Reddit threads and other things, look at a map and be like, okay, Here's who's on whose side. Here's what happened in Time of Contempt. Like, I found a Reddit thread for, like, the scenes I was, like, really lost on. And so that helped me go into this book where I was like, okay, I know the geography. I know the players. Now I can just enjoy the story. We've so far had way more Geralt, and it's great. And, yeah, I mean, something also that I was struck by is that there's war happening because of events uh, t I mean there's been war in almost every book to some extent like at least hearing about it like uh, I think in Sword of Destiny you hear about one of the first Nilfgaardian wars and then in this one you kind of have a second one and our characters are actually for once kind of interacting with it like they're not part of the front lines but they're seeing the effects of war Whew, it is graphic it is graphic I some of the descriptions, I was unprepared for how graphic it was. Because like um, Guy Gavriel K, for some reason, Andre Sapkowski can really get me to feel the atmosphere and like see what's around me, much to my chagrin with these really graphic scenes. So that's like a thing in this book. Uh, we have a new character who I like. I don't know how long we'll keep her. Her name's Milva. For, I don't know. I don't play the video games, not because I'm anti the video games. I just... I have a very um, addictive personality sort of thing. So when I start a hobby, I kind of go all in. And I think for a long time, I'm like, yeah, I don't need to be a gamer. Because those games, to play them to completion is hundreds of hours. And, I, um, you know, it's just like I already spend hundreds of hours doing other things. But maybe one day when I have, like, not a Surface Pro, I would play the Witcher games because I hear they're really cool. But, yeah, so that's going so much better for me so far. Like... Both, um, I think all of my reads, no, so this and Baptism of Fire are both, like, enjoyable when I'm reading them, but I don't really know where they're going. Like, I know the goal in Baptism of Fire, and in this one, I think I know General Jadao's goal, but I don't know. <laughs> but I, that matters to me less. I, I really just like the world and the characters in this one and the writing style. So good. But tonight, I'm going to get... Uh, food from this place called Rhythm and Soul. It's, uh, I get, I, I walk by it every day now and I'm like, this place looks so dope. 
and it's apparently like a vegan. Rhythm and raps. Oh. oh, thanks. That scared the shit out of me. <laughs> so as Ryan corrected, it's rhythm and raps. And I'm going to get their food tonight because, I don't know, they, they always have the best music playing and they have a really good, like, atmosphere. And they used to, well, I'm sure they still have a food truck, but I don't know how food trucks are doing. And it's apparently, like, vegan soul food and, like, Caribbean infusion and inspired and I think black-owned. Um, but regardless, I'm ordering from them tonight. It's just a matter of what. Do I want the mac and cheese? Do I want the loaded fries? Do I want a burger? I do not know. But I'm going to order from that and then... <laughs> I'm going to spend my evening watching The Great British Bake Off and The Boys, because, yeah, I think that's the type of Friday I'm going to have. So that's it for this check-in. Pucha, why don't you say hi to them? Not me. Them. Your people. Your people love you. He, he, he doesn't understand again. Cameras, you know. They're lost on him. Oh, oh, I forgot to tell you guys. So last week, I started a scarf, a sweater, because, um... Justine was making a sweater, and I wanted to go, oh my god, you look kind of scary to the screen when you're like that, you know that? But I started a sweater. And so, eh, let's see if I can get this to work. So this is like the back of it, of the cardigan, and this is going to be the front. So I'm making sleeves right now. So I have made progress, and hopefully, maybe next week, I will have two sleeves, and then I can put it together. And then maybe I'll have a knitting set and I can try and knit a sweater because that is goals. Can you tell my quarantine's going well? <laughs> so yeah, that's it for this check-in and I'll talk to you guys soon. My hair is just doing things today, but it's been the Mondayest of Mondays and I'm ending the vlog. <laughs> um, you're seeing me after I've finally eaten and so we're at an old apartment that's kind of so old the floors are have slight declines okay this is important information okay we will get to books I promise but this this is on my mind and we our bathroom door has two locks for some reason it has the lock in the door knob the the one that you can unlock from the outside of the bathroom as a safety precaution right and then it has like this deadbolt that we don't use but that is really loose and I guess because of gravity today locked the door so our bathroom door is locked from the inside with this deadbolt with no human there no one inside and the hinges are in the molding so we can't get to the hinges of the door and the molding also prevents us from really like getting in the crack and luckily I have a roommate now who is more adventurous than me because I mean I contacted you know the building people but I didn't know when they'd show up this was like at 5 30 on a Friday a Monday so like you know people are generally going home and he through that window <laughs> climbed out because we're not on the first floor we're like higher up so like he had to climb through this window open the other window go in and then open the bathroom door <sighs> such a Monday so that was like a thing that I was already really tired and kind of exhausted I don't know why I mean I think it's because I've been working out again and my body's like, why are you using this energy? Let us lump. But I will persevere. So I have finished though this week, Raven Stratagem. I am still thinking about my thoughts on it. I really liked some parts of it. Like I, when I was reading this Saturday morning, I was in a groggy mood, but it woke me up and I like I think I read a hundred or so pages throughout my Saturday and I just was really happy while I did that. But it's a weird book because it's a book that both wakes me up, but if I'm a certain level of not cognitively awake, it will also put me to sleep. I've never had a book do both. <laughs> this one definitely does, but for me, I still really loved the characters and the world expansion's cool. Not nearly as confusing as the first book. Alas, I actually kind of loved the confusing way the world building was executed in the first book but this one the way it's expanded is through these different point of views of characters and i think it did a really good job of explaining this government system in a very organic way and the ending had a moment where i literally took a picture of the page sent it to rachel from shades of orange because she's who i've been talking to about this book and was like ah <laughs> And just because, like, I, I mean, I predicted it, but the it happening was great. Okay, it was just great. And 
the ending is really interesting. I'm not going to pick up Revenant Gun right away, but I want to pick it up maybe in November, because you've already seen my October TBR. I do not have space. And also, I just want to sit with it a bit longer. I just want to sit with the world and the characters and like think about it. But it was great. I'm still reading Baptism of Fire. Let me tell you, if you haven't read the Witcher books, you need to pick up The Last Wish. Especially this time of year, like if you're someone like me who like likes monsters in your stories, but you don't need them to be like really scary, but you just like the creepy monster stories. Ah, oh, that's where the books go so good. Like we've had a couple, each chapter is kind of like a short story when it comes to Sapkowski and even his novels, like they're very complete thoughts as you travel along the story. Like one whole book's only seven chapters, so each chapter is very long. <laughs> but we've had moments where the Witcher gets to do his fighting thing and it's great and it just reminds me of the stories in The Last Wish and Sword of Destiny which are very monster hunting related which is what I love this time of year. I mean I love it all times of year. I mean I grew up watching Buffy and everything like that but I really like that here. Like I'm in a chapter right now that's mentioning vampires like this is great because with Sapkowski he always turns an idea on its head a little bit especially for these like classic fairy tale folklore things. So that's been great. I mean, I've been taking it kind of slow. I think I'm only 40% of the way in, but I've just finished Raven Stratagem. So I am going to be switching over to that as like my primary focus to try and finish before the end of the month if I can. But it's still just so much better <laughs> than Time of Contempt, guys. Just so much better. Like, Oh, Time of Contempt was so disappointing. But this one, I'm personally, it has the things I really have liked about this series on this page, and it's great. Um, any other updates? Oh, Empire of Gold. Okay. So, things are happening. Reveals are happening in many ways. A thing happened that I was like, yes! And I have to be vague about all these things. Another thing happened where I'm like, fine, I have buy into this now, but I'm glad you took your time with it because I wasn't sure. And I feel like I'm being vague enough that if you haven't read the books, you won't know, but if you've read the books, you understand. And if not, comment, just leave spoiler tags. But yes, I'm very interested. Oof, but there are some rough things happening like in the city right now, like, oof. But I mean, it like makes sense too. Like, the story does a really good job of handling dark things without depressing you with it. Like, you're not burdened with it. Which, like, sometimes you need that in a story. Like, if that's part of the themes and the authenticity. But I feel like you, you get the severity of the situation quite well without being bogged down with it. And yeah, but ooh. I hope the city... <laughs> makes it like the city is a character to me I'm like oh the city is actually yeah the city's been a character to me this whole time like I really have just wanted Davabad to be okay <laughs> and it's never been okay so we'll we'll see what happens but yeah Nari just had a thing well a couple of things happened but the thing I'm thinking of is um uh if you've read the book it happens during a medical procedure about 60 percent of the way through I feel like that's very vague, but it's so cool and I want to know the implications and what's going to happen. I want to know more of the real histories, not the fake histories. I feel like I'm getting some more real history. So Empire of Gold is great. So those were the things I've read and you already know about other things like Words of Radiance. Yeah, finish that. And, and, and I have two sleeves. Nothing's sewn together yet, but I have sleeves. <laughs> And now I gotta just put everything together. I also want to make pockets, but I'm more concerned about putting the, the panels together. So, yeah. And tonight I'm going to be talking about stories of your life and others with some friends. And maybe either continue The Witcher or start Jade City. Who knows? Anything could happen. I'm just glad I can get into the bathroom where my glasses are. That wasn't necessarily an option an hour and a half ago. So, yeah. But yeah, uh, thanks Thanks for listening to my chaotic thoughts as always, and like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you in the next one.